scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We're right here for an encounter. Give me an encounter. Give me an encounter in the name of Jesus. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. It's a powerful prayer. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. 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 Let it cover our lives, oh God. Let it cover all the earth. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my prayer. King of kings, you're the Lord of lords. Let your kingdom reign in us. Adonai. So I pray tonight and forever. Adonai. Let your kingdom come Remains our prayer Let your kingdom come yeah. Let your kingdom reign Let your kingdom reign Let it rain, let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain.
God bless you. We thank the Lord for the opportunity that he provides for us week after week to learn. Um, let me speak especially for those of us who are here. Be very careful so that we never get to points where we become too familiar with the dealings of God. You know, sometimes the Bible says knowledge can puff up. That means that when you get to a point where truly in experience, you understand the ways of God, chances are that you can plateau at a dimension in the spirit and believe that that is all there is in the pursuit and the knowledge of God. And it's not, it's not a state that may be done intentionally usually the bible calls it the pride of life the pride of life is different from pride the pride of life is the self-glorification that comes in the face of obvious results if you don't have results you cannot have the pride of life you can have pride but not the pride of life and i know that god has helped us and we have to be very careful so that we are not lost in the folly of achievements achievements are important but they can be very destructive very destructive hallelujah and so it's important that our hearts continue to remain malleable and open and the lord will help us in jesus name amen and amen I want to teach on something very powerful. I, I believe with all my heart, um, if we're not able to finish it tonight, we can continue um, perhaps after the miracle service. But, um, you know, we've been discussing along the lines of our convictions about God and the methodology. Please, I want you to listen very carefully there is a formula for knowing god that means that the pathway to the knowledge of god is not one that is dependent on creativity i've taught you and it will i will continue to repeat it again and again that when it has to do with your walking with god creativity is not required what is required is obedience and alignment you are not at liberty to choose your pathway you are not at liberty to choose your formula it is not given to a man to choose how he wants to know god that privilege was never given to the saints at no time was any man given the privilege to invent his way of knowing god are we together creativity only becomes useful when that kingly dimension when it has to do with the revelation to creation now to creation that's where creativity comes as one of the doorways to manifesting dominion but as far as our work with god and our spiritual growth is concerned we are not given the liberty to choose the pathway the bible says ask for the ancient path and when you find it walk in it that means that your creativity is not required i say this because the man please listen man is like is like a raw material are we together and there is a process that god leads man through 
and the object what man should become is already known in the heart of the father are we together and the bible does not even hide it he already tells us who and what we should be like that means at the end of our journey we should become like an embodiment that is personified in jesus the christ are we together now so you pass a product from one end of the the machine or whatever it is and then you already have an expectation that if done well this is what should happen when a caterer or a chef gets to the kitchen to cook he or she already has an idea are we together of what the meal should become there is nobody who cooks properly and then does not have an idea and in many regards a clear picture of what the meal should become you don't have to wait for the food to cook to know what it should be from the start you already know are we together now many people can be with you in the kitchen there and not exactly know what because of the kind of combination but at the end you must know what you should be when a pilot is about to fly an airplane from one place to another the pilot although the pilot may not see where he's going most of the time the pilot already knows that i'm flying from lagos to abuja i'm flying from lagos to kaduna and so on and so forth it is not only god that wants to that should know what we should be even the be should have an idea of what he should become transformation is almost impossible when there is no reference you cannot become nothing so your transformation must be based on a reference i can tell you why many believers do not grow because one we are ignorant of the methodologies of growth number two we do not even have an idea we know in theory that we should be like like telling me that i should be i should be like um so 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 and so person and now i don't know that person so how can i know what if you tell me to dress promise please stand if you tell me to dress like promise right i will have to come i will have to see him and see how he dressed and then try to replicate the dressing are we together but if i have not been able to see promise i do not know him it's going to be difficult for me it's a standard that is almost impossible not because the raw materials are out of reach but there is no reference so the bible says looking up to jesus and he calls jesus not just savior jesus has many names in the bible and one of the names as far as our transformation is concerned is the author and the finisher of our faith meaning that when you come into the faith life the kingdom life your gaze should continually be on jesus to refuse to be distracted by the vicissitudes of life and the things that can stem out of nowhere to set your gaze and focus on jesus christ and the bible says that now the lord is that spirit right he says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then the bible goes further to say now we all with unveiled face beholding him not them not it money is it fame is it are we together promotion is it the bible says don't behold it you will get it but the object of your focus is beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other ever increasing glory even as by the spirit of the lord so the moment i set my gaze on jesus christ no matter what it is that happens once my gaze is fixed on him there is an assurance that eventually i will begin to look like the one that i'm gazing at and as far as i've read my bible 
I do not see anything in Jesus that is not de desirable by men. Is it the crown upon his head? Is it the brightness of his glory? Is it the majesty that surrounds his throne? The Bible says, if I look at it, you know, we want the things that are on, in and around Jesus. And we want to get them looking away from him. Focusing on those things. The throne room is a place of wealth and abundance. The throne room is a place of majesty and splendor. The throne room is a place of excellence. The throne room is a place of power. And so when I fix my eyes on Jesus, sooner or later you find out that you are looking at a man but then you are becoming him but not just him generically you are becoming every dimension of him you are seeing are we together so i fix my eyes on jesus and suddenly something begins to happen to my finances i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my influence i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my understanding I fix my eyes on Jesus. Something begins to happen to my authority. He says, looking up to Jesus. And if you do not have an idea of who that Jesus is, then it is dangerous because there are many things. If no one ever tried to be Jesus or God in the Bible, it would be easy. But now there are many gods in the Bible. And there are many saviors, supposedly. That means if you don't know the one you are looking for, someone else can substitute him and say, I am God. And you will innocently look up to that person or that thing, believing you are looking at God. And you will be changed into that thing. It's only that at the end you will look at your life and say, this was not how I started. There will be no representation of beauty and glory in your life. Are we together so pray a prayer before i start open my eyes oh lord grant me the miracle of open eyes mm. open my eyes to see a man cannot see until your eyes are open. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this before we get to the word. The more I know God and the more I study scripture, the more I know what our problem is as men. Let me tell you one of the major problems of men. We think revelation is something you get. Are we together we know that our lives are dependent on the light we have there is no place in scripture where a man was instructed to pursue light everywhere in scripture is light coming listen very carefully for as long as you believe you have the power to get light then the light of god will never come these truths that we teach they are very exact it's a body of spiritual knowledge that is given to you don't forget this scripture a man can receive nothing a man can receive nothing receive nothing until it is given what god does not send to you from heaven can never enter your hand so th there's no point seeking around your assignment when the bible says seek and you will find the idea is not to go around the word seek there in its root word is not to search as it were it's really the word position yourself it's more of a posture than it is of a searching There are things you can never see by studies. No. This is beyond the realm of education. This is beyond the realm of intellect. Although your intellect will participate in communicating it, but it does not come from the realm of intellect. 
there is a wisdom that is Sophia human wisdom is a product of age and your exposure to science but there is a wisdom that comes from above are we together now so I, I, I need you to understand that these spiritual things are not necessarily things that you learn true revelation comes you are made a partaker you fellowship with that mystery it's a fellowship you are called into it that's the reason why when you communicate that wisdom the dimension of this it's ancient is older than you predates you predates your christian experience and even predates your level of spiritual exposure it tells you that wisdom is coming from a realm that is older higher and more superior than you so really the prayer is not to to search around the prayer is to position yourself so that that light can come to you but when that light comes to you and you receive it according to the authority of scripture the bible says you must arise and shine if that light comes you can know when the light has come by the possibilities that are now captured in your life i will continue to teach us that our lives not necessarily immediately but our lives with time and that time is not forever and that time is not your lifetime your lifetime is too long with time because we operate by times and seasons it becomes unfair to expect everything to happen in your life in one day no you are not living in the realm of eternity you are living in the realm of time so many things in your life are time dependent they are time dependent for three reasons one there is a spiritual law called the law of process and so there are things in life that the speed has already been regulated by god your being serious with god or not cannot increase the speed it will happen within that time then there there is time that is regulated that is based on your insight and obedience so you can slow down and increase that pace of achievement based on the insight that comes to you and the application of that truth and then of course time can be regulated based on the hindrances the spiritual hindrances are we together yes and the spiritual hindrances are only three number one covenants number two disobedience number three um what's the third one demonic attack the devil can hinder you i desire to come to you once and again but satan hindered us so satan can hinder men so i don't expect that pastor femi in one day on hearing the truth of scripture no matter how accurate i do not expect you to enter into the experiential fullness of everything overnight in fact in fact if that happens to you is proof that something went wrong and jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men are we together ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me you would have just said all over the earth but he broke it into dimensions jerusalem samaria judea and to the utmost part of the earth so it's very very important but let me submit to you ask any man that has been granted access to the spirit of revelation if they are honest enough with you they will tell you it did not come from the abundance of the study of scripture the study of scripture is important it helps to prime your spirit man like you prime a pump but the real revelation comes from God to you it comes as light and then 
depends on the quality of your mental enlightenment to break it down into the truths that that light communicates god does not speak english god does not speak greek he doesn't speak french he doesn't speak spanish or hausa or english he speaks light his language is light are we together yes and the only faculty of your tripartite being that can receive light is your spirit man so when that light comes upon your spirit man you have it but then it is not useful to you being locked up in the realm of the spirit and interfacing your spirit and your body where it is needed remember the earth realm is where all these spiritual realities are required they are not just required to remain in the realm of the spirit otherwise there will be no need for transformation once that light comes upon you that's enough but you need it translated here and now are we together and that technology of transfer is what we must learn the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light that you may know so you begin to have understanding and when you have understanding i've taught you that this body does not have power on its own are we together when your spirit leaves your body you are called dead dead means that your body is inactive so the body is a slave somewhat or better still the body is an executor the assignment of the body is to execute the conclusions of your spirit your soul whatever your body decides i mean whatever your spirit man decides or whatever is decided in the solical realm your body is now authorized to execute it so if my body continues to go to region and continues to capture experiences that are destructive to the health of my life and my destiny the problem is not the body the problem is that something is happening in the realm of the spirit and if you are a believer then the problem is not from your spirit man the problem is from the solical realm that's where the battle is now why because he that is joined to christ is one spirit are, are you getting this listen what i'm showing you now are these are the fundamentals of christianity it's important that you know them it's amazing how many believers get born again and they are absolutely clueless about the faith life and we preachers have a lot of repentance to do in terms of the miscommunication of truths because we do not guide believers methodically we just randomly bring truths anyhow and so they continue to receive truths that are not progressive there is no synergy in their growth they cannot connect the usefulness of a revelation to another experience so they have many experiences but they are disjointed i can't see the relevance of this topic to this one there should be a sequence are we together yes there should be a sequence to your spiritual growth that means that come my dear that means i should be able to teach you something now and then you come you should hold her hands you should be able to connect what i taught you are we together like a ladder it should lead you to the next you stand here level of life and then i should connect you this is how growth happens if your truths are not sequential you will get a lot of spiritual information but not coordinated enough to reveal christ in your life this is the tragedy of many believers so when i switch on your laptop i see many sermons i see many topics i see many um exegesis of scripture theological dissertations that have come from different people different schools of ministry and so on and so forth and on the abundance of those information you can pride yourself to believe you are growing but the problem is that truths were supplied but not sequentially arranged are we together so somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about prosperity 
you don't know where it fits in the graph somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about character somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about service in the house of god are we together somewhere come in your spiritual life they taught you about demonology deliverance warfare somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about prayer are, 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 you, are you following me now somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about whatever it is now these informations are all useful but you find out that you have them yet your life does not testify that you have light the problem is not the scarceness of light the problem is the sequential arrangement of truth notice how jesus began to teach the people jesus officially started his mentorship with what we call the beatitudes it was an exe exegesis on the kingdom life gradually he began to lead them then he started getting deeper he got to a point that was so deep people ran away and he said will you also go he said to whom shall we go you alone have the words of life by the time we get to john 14 15 he's now introducing the holy spirit never did he introduce the holy spirit before that time then he got to a point where jesus himself was almost frustrated he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot capacity capacity you don't have the capacity to bear them he says how be it no cause for concern when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you he didn't say he will give you truth many people want to get truth they don't want to be guided in truth listen carefully you can get truth but when you are guided you are shown the sequential arrangement of truth in a way and manner that can stamp the gates of hell this is where the problem is there is almost nothing you will tell an average believer that he's hearing for the first time it may just be in a more with more theological accuracy or with more intellectual prowess but the central thought is almost always known yet our results our lives are not looking for new things our lives are looking for a rearrangement a sequential arrangement something you knew before prosperity is why prosperity does not bless you are you getting what i'm saying now something that you should not hear there there are messages that you were supposed to hear first before hearing about success and since you did not hear it what is now light has turned to a sword that is killing you it is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets are we together an evangelist and pastors and teachers are we together now and then the bible says for the equipping the perfecting the word perfecting there is the maturing of the saints when you give birth to a baby a number of us here have children at the back we have our lovely children they are enjoying the comfort of the first days and months of their lives now only a wicked mother will give birth to a child and carry stock fish and put it in the mouth of that child or carry um, cow tail are we together it doesn't mean cow tail is destructive to someone else that's an answered prayer at a level you will sit down and pray and god will supply but now cow tail will be required in that baby's life but somewhere but now when you give the child cow tail you give the child every kind of thing you will soon find out that your child is dead what killed the child food food did you ever learn that food can kill it's not only poison that kills it is not only wrong things that kill good things not arranged sequentially can kill the prosperity of fools shall destroy them it is not the prosperity is that that guy was a fool he needed to be wise first 
So you, the word of God that was allocated to translate him from the realm of foolishness to wisdom. And what is wisdom? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you taught that guy about prosperity and you did not inculcate in him the fear of God. You watch what he would do to his mother or father when the money comes. What I'm sharing is powerful. This is not even my message. I, I don't know how I got here. But this is powerful. Sometimes the Lord just distracts us like that to speak to people. It can be a prophetic word for someone. That look, 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 look. Your journey of ever learning. Your journey of priding yourself with the vastness of spiritual information will full frustrate you. Because you will find out that someone does not have one tenth of your knowledge. But the little he has was so sequentially arranged. His life will show that he's growing properly. So the average church member doesn't even carry a Bible again. What's the point? Open to the book of First John. You say, I know this is the record. Look, look at the person who is talking. He daily loads us with benefits the person who is talking now does not have transport back home now i'm, I'm not talking of initial i don't ever blame any christian when it does not have results from the instance it is okay and it is normal but when you have dwelt around the place of light for a while and your life refuses to bear that witness then it's proof that something is wrong and we can easily diagnose the problem number one will be to check in the area of ignorance if we find out that ignorance is not the problem then number two we we'll check the quality of the information be careful less what you call light be darkness so you can call darkness light isaiah chapter 9 when you read i think verse 2 or thereabout I can't remember it says the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light until the great light came they didn't even know that what they were walking in is called darkness it says that they who were of the valley of the shadow of death upon them a light has come we can be galloping in a lot of ignorance justified either by science or culture etc and believe that based on the abundance of this information we have light there is the true light that lighted every man there are other lights that cannot light any man they can light other things but they can't light men animals have a principle that they work with is that true most of the principles that the animals work with are not applicable to men the principle the animals work with is light but that light cannot light any man in their world and in their kingdom and in their sphere of reality remember all power belongs to god so the principle there is not an invention of science it is god's allocation that helps the animal kingdom to also behave well but because we are the highest of god's creation many of those truths they are truths but not applicable to us there are some of those truths that are applicable to us that's why god punishes foolish men by sending them back to the animal kingdom he said go and study my ways as given to the ants you are a lazy man you are a sluggard you are reducing yourself through laziness so i refer you to a lower dimension of my kingdom study the ants that they do not have a king they do not have this kind of organization so when you study, you come back. Every time men refused to learn the laws of their realm, they were degraded. Nebuchadnezzar was turned into what? What was he turned into? For seven years, only his brain was left the brain of a man. But every other thing, was that of a beast and there was a lesson he refused to learn as a man so when he became a beast he learned that lesson at the end of seven years 
Nebuchadnezzar wrote a sermon you should pay attention to. He exalted the name of the Lord. Are we together now? They know not, neither will they understand. 82 and verse 5 of Psalms. They know not, neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, or I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some, all of you are children of the most high. The next verse is a tragedy. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So the tragedy, please hear me again. Sometimes, there are times that it's just plain ignorance. Are we together? But there are times that it is not ignorance. It is the inability to sequentially arrange truth. Many years ago, the Lord did something in my life it's a personal dealing so it's not something that you can build a doctrine out of um the lord prohibited me from studying my bible for one week complete one week that's why i said it's a personal dealing yours may be an attack don't mistake in that what that it may be the same thing because god did not tell you yours is laxity that's why i said it's a personalized dealings satan uses words to deceive men ye are clean through the word that i've spoken to you for one week i did not read my bible not because i didn't want to i didn't understand the morale of the dealing until i was done and this was the whole object behind it the, the, the entire focus the entire objective behind it was to bring me to a point where i would realize that i was ever learning but never coming in experience to the knowledge of the truth. Are we together? Yes. So I was getting, you know, those days, well, now we're still passionate about God, but there's something about the journey of a believer. It's like marathon. Once they blow the whistle on your mark, get set, ready sometimes you are even your, your blood is as hot as whatever go and you see someone running as if that is going to stop just at the door so that zeal that fire greek this concordance lexicon you know just study anything once you see a strange word ah pneumatology okay this is i should add this very quickly Homiletics, homiletics. Ah. So we were just learning things that were just scattered revelation, spiritual but scattered. And the rate of change versus the the effort was not commensurate, and it was a call for concern. And so God was trying to save me trouble. I would have been in big trouble now. Let me tell you why many Christians are angry and don't believe that others are using God's power entirely. I'll tell you why. They are aware of the effort that was put in to arrive, to, to take one step. It's like they did a labor of five years. So when they see you soaring in the spirit, they say something is wrong. Something is wrong. I started learning 10 years, seven years, five years ago, and you just came. And right now in two years, you are in this level. Not so. One of the greatest blessings that can happen to you is that when you are born again, God plants you under an anointing and plants you under a grace that sustains enough spiritual intelligence, enough balance. Huh? Spiritual intelligence and balance. These two things. Grace and truth. When it is grace alone, you are in trouble. When it is truth alone, you are still in trouble. It is full of grace and truth so when god plants you under a ministry or under a man of god many of us the real tragedy in your life was not the attack that came from your foundation the real tragedy now i say that respectfully was probably the spiritual system you were planted in when you got born again because your zeal made your heart open for any information unfortunately many of us received chaffs 
it didn't kill you but you were not healthy either because the prodigal son ate the food of of pigs he didn't die but you can't say he was healthy that's how it is spiritually please listen very carefully shepherds can destroy people how did moses find a wife read your bible it was shepherds that came to drive the women remember the family where moses's wife came from they were shepherds the women will come to feed their cattle and those shepherds will come to drive them and fetch water and moses came and beat the living daylight out of those people it is important there are shepherds that watch their flock by night but there are shepherds that kill their flocks he said i will give you pastors after my own heart please listen to this because tomorrow you'll be the one mentoring a lot of people spiritual growth is a school it's a school with an exact curriculum that god will help you the sequential revelation of truth matters it does i'm telling you this there are many things we know about god that are wrong there are many things we don't know about god that should be known the dimension of breakthrough you desire requires a certain kind of revelation light is the currency that we use to purchase spiritual realities i used to think it's faith but it's not faith faith is simply the credit card that you use but what really pays for it is light It, from the abundance of these things then you will know who god is and you can worship him in spirit and in truth there are things you can know about god that makes you unbendable immovable nobody comes to sway you toe and fro with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive the bible says it's important now before i get to my sermon this is this i can't believe that i've still not started preaching look at these people please start look at these people which dimension of your spiritual life has not been arranged accurately there are people who are not even born again because you check the truths that they have salvation is not part of it they never got born again they were just born in a family just because you were not in a beer parlor does not mean you are safe so they started like that they started playing keyboard in church like this guy is playing now from keyboard he became um assistant music director are you seeing that now from assistant music director you became music director from music director you became deacon Huh? Yes. From deacon, they open a branch just when you are graduating and they call you pastor, whoever you are. Now, the truth is that whether or not you think you have grown, according to God's order, there is a pattern. God is a God of patterns. He's not just a God of motion. He's a God of patterns. How you move and how you grow will determine whether you will become that which is in his heart now this is the interesting thing about god even when you think you have been working with god like we arrogantly say for 15 years the day he reveals himself to you he will rearrange your life back and sometimes when he he rearranges your life by trying your works with fire it's in the bible that means you can see a lot of achievements and the fire of his light will come and all that will be left is your true state that means God will say you men say you are in level 5 you level 15 but really you are just at level 1 now you are at liberty to choose whether you will pay the price unashamedly to start properly with God or allow the ego that you have to just make you continue yes Lord 
Yes, Lord, you are the King. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So men can call you MOG. Men can call you deacon. Men can call you this and that. But the truth is that if you are not growing and building according to pattern, I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But let me tell you, you are only wasting your time. When God comes, he never continues from where, what you were doing. Look at what happened to Abraham. When he met Abraham at all of the Chaldeans, this was his instruction. Abraham, come out of thy father's house and out of thy kindred. I hope you know at that time, Abraham was not a failure. At least he had some results. He had 200 plus servants. He had cattle. He had a number of things. And said, Abraham, don't think I'm coming to continue from there. I will start with you again. Let's start that journey. This is what brought some of you here. Some of you are already pastors, men of God, leaders. Some of you here were youth pastors before you got admission. You carried youth pastor mentality and just came and God said, no way, come and sit down. And if you are not careful, and please, every pastor here, this, this is an advice. Don't just see someone come because they said he came from so-so-so ministry or so-so-so parish. And in that parish, he was the music director. And you just say, okay, no problem, come and sit down and play keyboard. And the guy comes with that celebrity mindset. Because in his church, spiritual growth is not necessary. In his church, just attendance and loyalty is what is, and, and sowing of seeds here and there. But now, this requirement requires you to sit down. Many celebrities get born again. I mean, secular celebrities now. They get born again and come to church. And then we just transfer their fame of the world and just add anointing on it not god you are joking not god mm -mm. not god not the god of the heavens when you come everybody starts from class one even jesus when he came the father didn't even pity jesus to say okay you are jesus i mean this is me he started right from scratch at age 12 i imagine what was in the mind of jesus when he was reading himself Thou shalt love the Lord your God. And the rabbis were saying, I hope you are learning it. And he was just watching. The force that holds what he's reading. And not even Jesus was promoted like that. He had to wait. At age 12, he was learning. What do you think you are to just jump the steps? Favor does not jump steps. So, you hear that? Because our idea of shortcut must be balanced. Favor is shortcut, yes. But it is not shortcut to alienate you from information that you hear. Favor is a system that was designed to help you. Because men do not start life in an ideal way. Please listen. If I was teaching our precious school of ministry students the graph of life yesterday, the good old graph of life. If you are not part of school of ministry, join even if it's just because of that. If you don't change after that teaching, I don't know what will change you in this life again. The graph of life. Are we together? If I get born again 40 years, how many of you know that I am blessed, but that's a disadvantage with respect to earthly time. We don't have forever on earth. Now, I got born again 40 years, and someone got born again at age 3. Who has more advantage than the other? And don't say we are all equal. You are not equal. This guy has time. Time. At age 3, born again. At age 4, filled with the Holy Ghost. At age 5, 
being mentored by a visionary father when that child becomes 12 he is now you of 70 at age 12 now listen let me show you listen listen don't just laugh let me show you the relevance of things like mercy favor these things are not just random things god looked at the way man works on earth and said if i don't add these other things man will never become the fullness of god's grace so here and there he interjects your work with life with these acts of his benevolence to help you this is where things like favor are important if you don't have favor in life you you will succeed the problem is you will only succeed if your life is ideal nobody's life is ideal including jesus they hid jesus because somebody wanted to kill him until herod died and he said okay now you can go there were things he would have been doing within that time mephibosheth because a midwife I, I, I'm, am I alone in this place this night? Mephibosheth was a sincere person. The midwife that held him was careless. And because of her carelessness, that guy fell down and broke his leg. Now, sorry would not solve that problem. Because there are things he will never be able to do. So how does God help this man's destiny? By allowing him to live life the way it should be? So God introduces things like mercy. Thou shall arise and have mercy. And looks at him God. And he knows. He looks at the way man should go. And looks at the way man goes. This guy was called to be a prophet to the nations. This is his destiny. Are we together now? According to God's predeterminate counsel. The destiny of this gentleman. Like Jeremiah. Is to be a prophet to the nations. But it so happened that the womb that would give birth to him married an unbeliever. Now listen to this. I hope you know this is not his fault. It's just that the woman that should marry him because she didn't have enlightenment or she was deceived or misled. Now God married to a non-Christian. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Now this guy, according to the blueprint of his life, he should have finished his assignment at 70 if he starts his journey at 1. But because of what he has to fight, an extra battle that was not in the original plan is now here. And that battle is the battle of grafting him out of this family first. And listen to me. Sometimes this gentleman has no legitimate ground to leave the house until he gets to university. So his destiny will have to wait till what what age do you get to university? 17. This guy has to wait for 17 years. Are you getting the point now? Because according to God's blueprint, that is the safest way for him to live. If he lives in a way that they, they can kill him, and God, for the sake of his destiny, will not allow him that. Now, while he's waiting for that 17 years, his brain is not closed. He's learning a lot of things he must undo. Because you cannot be in my house and not serve my God. So while he's bowing down and doing all of these things, heaven is bleeding. Because according to the blueprint, by age five, this guy should already be seeing visions. But now, the, and Satan, when he peeps there, Satan will make sure that the clerics isolate this guy and further indoctrinate him to complicate destiny. I show you why it's dangerous. It's not enough to be saved. Where you are planted can determine how you grow. Please, parents, let me tell you something. And even those who have children now, don't sit down and say it does not matter where they hear truth. It matters. Sit down and waste your child's time hearing nonsense, wasting his time. At the end of it, you will find out that there is no sequential growth. Please listen. I'm telling you, I'm teaching something entirely different. This is my note. I've not even started. But if this is how the Holy Ghost wants it this night, I think it, this, is, this is a deep and mature teaching. I'm, I'm correcting the reason why the Christian experience of many believers is just, is just a buffet of frustrations. 
I agree that an area or two of your life may be trusting, be needing the hand of God. But when every area fails, something is wrong. This one is no longer the law of process. Apostle, nothing is working in my life. I've been a Christian from 2001. I tell you where the problem is. I tell you. And the problem is not only an attack. An attack looks like the obvious reason. But I'm telling you now, there is no prophet, no pastor, no apostle that will just pray over the issue of attack alone and then your life changes. No. You want holistic growth? We must do the diagnosis tonight to know what is wrong. Back to my story. This gentleman is loitering somewhere very far from God and far from destiny. Are we together? Now he gets to the university after 17 years. 17 years has been wasted. When he gets there now, the devil will try to do all kinds of things. For instance, the devil can ensure that his first CGPA is 1.2. 1. point what? Who will listen to God under that kind of condition? The pressure from life will make him say, do you know what? Let me find a fellowship where in 30 minutes they finished. Now, it doesn't mean, please, I hope you understand that I'm not being sarcastic to any... The fire on this guy's destiny is being quenched because you, you call it circumstances, but these are intentional orchestrations. And then this gentleman one day, that's why inviting people to the house of God, if you are sure of the quality of what you are receiving, then it is evil to not invite people. This is not the issue of evangelism. This is you being an extension of God's mercy. Because the person you will be inviting, you think you are just inviting, you don't know you are acting prophecy. Imagine that this guy now is in Zaria in this situation. Imagine what heaven will do to you as the person who holds his hand to insist he comes to Koinonia. You thought you just invited a man, but you literally shifted a destiny. Literally. Because of one encounter. Are you with me this night now? It's very important. Some of you are now seeing. Now, do you know that heaven will rejoice when this gentleman comes? You have invited five, six people. But all of them don't have the same destiny. This guy ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Did you really invite one person? How many people did you invite? He will give you flimsy excuse. uh, excuses. I've not eaten. And the Holy Ghost will say, feed him. And you are like, Holy Spirit, what is all this one? I don't have transport. And you will bring him. Now imagine that you bring him for koinonia and then I'm not ready working for others. The moment you enter, except your feet, does, something must happen and reduce you back to look like your parents. You can choose to believe what I'm saying. No problem. I don't know who prayed for you before you arrived. But let me tell you sincerely. If you know that there was no salvation in your past, please hear what I'm saying seriously and pay attention to it. Altars are wicked. They are like time. Nothing can fight them. They will move slowly unperturbed by your pride until they catch up with you. Hallelujah. I heard of a man of God that bought truck, this Dangote truck. They kept advising him to diversify and that guy carried all his money i don't know how much that truck is but it's so expensive the moment the person bought that truck I, I, he was coming along i think kogi or so the road that was how that thing just capsized it burnt in a way burnt everything inside and burnt everything about that man and the guy sat down and was almost killing himself Who taught you what you know spiritually forget about the one koinonia taught you what is it resting upon because some of you this is why you are not experiencing the outstretched arm of god now i don't mean i don't mean i love the body of christ but i have to tell you the truth 
there are men of God and there are churches that are wonderful but they are not healthy for a foundation for your spiritual growth no the context of what is taught is pungent and dangerous for your spiritual growth salt is good but if you fetch one mudu of rice to cook and you fetch one mudu of salt to cook is that a blessing no. there are truths that are like salt they are sprinkled and is enough by the time you carry that truth the same size of rice and combine everything you will deal and kill somebody there are people the sermons they had is why they never saw the necessity of prayer in their spiritual work are we together they came from a highly intellectual family and you see people just laugh and say demons the only demon you have is a demon in your brain and your mind and the devil says wow this is wonderful for the child who comes from the church the house of an evangelist and a prayer warrior that is a correct sermon but for you who is coming from a foundation where they wrote your name when they gave birth to you while you were a baby your head was inside water and they were speaking nonsense to your destiny and you believe you will just casually say in jesus name i'm born again no sir the same way you don't say casually money come and it comes there are systems and there are principles the same way too if you are not careful you can be born again in a ministry that all they see is demons did you hear what i said everything is demons and then there is serious trouble because you will never have the enlightened mind that will keep you in victory your entire life will be full of warfare and fear because that is the context of the education that you received so when it's time to be responsible and understand the systems of the kingdom you will not so all you will keep doing in your life is to pray what knowledge should bring to you you are trying to get it through prayer are we together now when you should learn when you hear sermons like sermons on destiny help us sermons on excellence the law of honor you just ignore it and say all i know is that there is a witch in this family you will find out that even when the person you have been calling a witch dies you will celebrate and nothing will change because the issue of which was already settled but the remaining issues in fact the weightier matters that required spiritual enlightenment the person who mentored you did not call you to see the necessity it's a blessing to have a good pastor over you it's a blessing to have a man of god that can draw the boundaries that are relevant to your growth and construct you like a building i will give you pastors after my heart this is a mistake we're making in ministry now we just ordain people anyhow the moment someone looks handsome charismatic can dress well you just say come you are you are pastor this and that arrogantly stand on stage and confuse people at the end of it the people don't know what they believe again it's nine o'clock let's pray we can't hear this kind of thing and just round up we are going to pray seriously first and foremost hold the hands of someone and blast in tongues first to prepare your spirit find a neighbor and pray seriously prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is for any man who intends to be changed to be lifted and to become great in life and destiny Shalabaranda kaprakato sepeles. Pray, pray, pray.
Shele parakato jambra kata embra kata kata baruto soto preke devela. My Christian experience must be fruitful. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit in my life. Barakato sabrandega de balash. Embreketo kashata barata segete balakata brandega de balash. Embreketo shabros kalakapo shata brandega de. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray this night for your destiny. You are going to call it by name and declare that in this season, my destiny open, 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 open up. He said, Lo, I come. Please pray, please pray. Destiny, in the name of Jesus, be open. Shekete kaparaka to pariketa, embrata leka paronda shalakata variata. My assignment, my destiny, open up. In the name of Jesus, no wasting time, no rambling around. Open up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Outside, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Shabarakata. Emprakato shekete leke teke 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 Emprakato soto pako rakata pariyata Open up Open up Open up In the name of Jesus Open up Open up. Lekata barata shote reketaba. Open up. In the name of Jesus. Open up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. You are going to pray. And you are going to cry to God. And say, Lord, every, every disarrangement of truth in my life that has been responsible for my stunted growth, I pray by the Spirit of God, rearrange my life. Rearrange my destiny. What I have believed wrongly, correct it, oh God. I am open, I'm not a rebel. Let your emphasis be my emphasis. Pray. More than what a man of God said. Arrange my life sequentially. Arrange my destiny sequentially. 
who am I to meet in this season? Who must enter my life in this season based on your arrangement? Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please don't think you are, you are wasting your time. You are praying seriously. Now, I say this with all humility. Listen. Please listen. Imagine if till now I was still trying to hear God concerning koinonia. Are you seeing now? Imagine there are people according to the blueprint of your assignment you are not supposed to be looking for money now you are supposed to have it already because the next phase of your life is dependent on that supply there are people right now at according to god's blueprint the level of prophetic you should be operating in it is required for the kind of assignment but because you are still here god cannot move with you hear me hear me there are ladies according to god's blueprint you should be ready for marriage now based on the sequence of your destiny but it's right now you are getting serious with your life hear me hear me there are some of you according to the sequence of destiny it's you and your elder brother that should be standing as pillars but the devil killed your brother from bed that means you are carrying the burden of two people. You need your grace plus the grace that will come on you else. So when you pray one hour, God will say, add it to, because you were supposed to pray only an hour because there's someone else holding it with you. But he's alive and he's drinking around. And God's agenda must move forward. So you must build stamina to be able to carry it. Listen, listen to me. Please listen. I'm speaking by the spirit. Don't think I'm just talking anyhow. Listen to me. Please listen. There are families, according to the design of God, you are supposed to be three men, but the devil made sure no man come to that family. It was later on you showed up, sometimes as the last born. And now you have to stand in a position of three men as one man. There are families. It's supposed to be you and your father and your pastor. But now your father did not serve the Lord or your father has died. God will not change his purposes. His plans can change. But his purposes remain eternal. Listen, listen, there are families, according to God's design, you should never even try to say, okay, I'm looking for two or three jobs. Because according to that design, your father should have been responsible to help you with an inheritance. But now the devil hijacked that destiny. And the way you are right now, if you fail, there is no more hope for your family. Because everyone that came to help the devil took them out of the way you know it i like you to pray and say lord i will not fail you and i will not fail destiny is someone praying lord i will not fail you i will not fail destiny if it depends on me then i will not fail if it depends on me if it depends on me to change the course of my family if it depends on me to enthrone Jesus over my family. If it depends on me, I will not fail. Someone pray. Pray with the picture of your loved ones in your mind. Pray with the picture of your children on your mind. Pray with the picture of your destiny on your mind. Shakatata. Embrekete, keteke, keteke. Ebra koto shoto breketele keta 
If it depends on me, I will not fail. It may take time, but I will not fail. Hallelujah. I wish you people knew that song. Atmosphere, shift now. Huh? You may not know it. I just, I just had that song in my spirit. I will not fail if it depends on me. I think about my life with all humility. And I think about the destinies that would have gone down even if I were born again and I refused to answer the call. Listen, the next prayer point, we are praying. Listen, Spirit of the living God, if I am found anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Bring me back to the place of destiny. Lift your voice and pray. If I found myself anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Please pray, pray, pray. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny geographically. Align me to destiny relationally. Align me to destiny financially. Allow me to align me to destiny spiritually. Align me to destiny, oh God. Pray that prayer and watch your life change. Align me to destiny. Let me stop rambling around. Bring me to the place, the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It was never my intention, never my intention to be in Zaria. It would have been the last place for me to think of being at this time. But you see, there's something about destiny. There are people when the devil wants to waste their time, they will get American visa and travel and roam around America. Just because you are making some money does not mean you are in destiny. Look at how God brought some of you here. God carried you from different places. It's destiny. Forget about the story that brought you. Align me to destiny. Let me not find... Listen, let me tell you this. There are people, when the devil wants to destroy their destiny... They will receive certain kinds of promotions you would think uh, is promotion is not wrong in itself but they will receive a promotion and become a ceo and that ceo will not allow them do and be certain things life is more than money oh. life is more than fame are we together next prayer point lord where am i supposed to have been in destiny that i am not I pray by the Spirit in this season, take me there. Take me there. I should not be at this level. In ministry, financially, maritally, spiritually, pray by your Spirit. Bring acceleration to my life. There is no more time to waste. The voice of my generation is crying. Speedy manifestation, oh God, of all that pertains to my destiny in this season.
Ante barato salaka pando plus. Sakata pakato prakata lekatos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. The next prayer point, I will have to teach you a little to understand. Covenants are systems of advantage. Please listen. A covenant is more than an agreement. It's a system that provides an advantage in life. Listen to me carefully. You reign in life based on the privilege of the advantage that you have. Are we together now? Yes. Advantage. Every time you see anything that spells an advantage in the Bible, you must study it. Everybody rose based on an advantage. Joshua stood before Jericho helpless like any leader would be, except that he was standing on an advantage it was that advantage that brought the captain of the lord's army he said i am here daniel would have died in babylon except for the advantage he was standing on and based on that advantage gabriel came and said i am come to give you understanding and he understood the times that was allocated for the liberation Abraham was standing on a covenant and so he saw in a vision that God's people would be in captivity for 400 years. Please listen to me. This thing I'm teaching you is a deep teaching. Your destiny will remain on the ground until there is a system of advantage. I repeat, the knowledge of God is not based on covenant. Your spiritual growth but kingdom advancement and the advancement of your life and destiny is based on systems of advantage. Are we together? And there are many systems of advantage. I hope that in the coming weeks, just brace up for the teachings that will come in the coming weeks because there are things that we need to learn. An advantage. There are systems of advantage. Listen to what Haman, when Haman went to his family, his brethren, and Haman told them, he said, look at what Esther did to me. They put their hands on their head. They said, Haman, you are finished. This woman is a Jew. She looked at him and said, whose son are you? Not who trained you. Not what weapons do you have. I need to know what advantage you are carrying to stand before Goliath. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, am I a dog? Am I a dog that you stand before me and come with a sling? Are you trying to catch a goat? And David said, you come to me with your spheres and your bows. But I come to you, listen, in a name. Ah, I wish we could deal with this. Because you see, a name in the spirit is a revelation of a dimension of God. God's dimensions are stored in his names. I came with a name. Are we together now? And foolish Goliath, instead of him to ask, are you a Jew? He kept quiet. What do you think made Jericho to close their gate? They said, who are the guys coming to attack us? The moment they said they were Jews, they close the gate. Close it quickly. We know these guys. There is a track record. There is a strange God that works with them. Ah! There are men who there are things they are standing on. And based on those systems of advantage, I tell you, they can fail in other things, not finances. No. They can make the most stupid financial decisions. Yet what they stand upon will bail them out. Have you seen families like that? All their children must be leaders. Must be leaders. It doesn't matter what happens. 
whether it's a village school or whatever the girl must be head girl the boy must be head boy in a class of many people eventually they will be leaders when you say the jf kennedy family what comes to your mind there are families that are a dynasty it's not just business they were passing they were platforms whether with fraternity with satan or fraternity with god but there was a system of advantage i will never forget i've always been a very brilliant person i remember i was in jazz one this issue changed my life I had always been the best student, effortlessly the best. In fact, I didn't know that people used to read during exams. Nobody ever asked me to go and read. If you were in my class, just give up. In terms of position, you are wasting your time. It's not only that I will take first, the gap I will give you will make you not to come near me again. And something happened. When I was in secondary school, the first time I was the best student. The second time, I think I was the best student or so. But the third time, the guy that took third before, the parents moved to living faith. Listen, oh, they moved to living faith. It didn't reach three months. They did anointing service for that boy straight when he came and wrote exams. When that now, this is not about first or second, I'm just using it to explain something. When the results came out, and I looked at my results. I looked at the guy it, it wasn't you know I didn't know what I knew now you can imagine a small boy I said no something is wrong something has to be wrong because my best performance was this point something has to be wrong that guy was his average was just with like five marks I said no there has to be a recalculation something is wrong and then I met him I said in the spirit of sportsmanship congratulations and he laughed he told me that they did anointing service for them in living faith i said what is living faith it was later when i understood i said ah i was standing on my brain he was standing on an altar listen sir let me do this come tell us your testimony now everybody stand and listen to this testimony go ahead um i am a pastor i was in mubi before we got transferred to abuja because of the distance and the financial constraint we decided that my wife would not return back to school so during uh, the last uh, her second semester exam she didn't go and then uh, we attended Koinonia, uh, the miracle service uh, last month, and then we the resolve that she should go back to school. When she returned to school, they uploaded their results. Lo and behold, she had results. And all of the results were A. I mean B. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, you, you, I, I called him out so that he would talk. This is a pastor. She didn't do second semester. Or, or what second semester? Semester because of listen because of financial constraint which is justifiable they now came down he relocated and then when all of that happened he now planned because he had been had been in touch so it's not something that we're just talking i've been in touch this is not a license for laziness no it's just showing you that there are possibilities that's why i said the prayer i want you to pray now if i don't teach this you will not understand it woe betides a man who stands alone listen bishop oyedeko listen one man of god in the south south he was about to start ministry and then he went to bishop oyedeko for prayer and advice as you know they were releasing him and bishop oyedeko spoke to him in yoruba i wish i'm a yoruba person he said never fight alone that's my advice for you never fight alone I show you why many people continue to fall victims in life. So, the plan was that they will go back 
and then let the wife now register now that god has helped them things have started changing i'm explaining the story for you they now went and said okay let's see how far as they printed results second semester result a and b parallel that's what came out as the wife's result this man is a pastor he has a congregation he's a spiritual father to many he will not come and mess up his integrity and he's, this is a father with a wife and children listen it is not to endorse laziness but it's to let you know that this kingdom is a compendium of possibilities limited only by your spiritual understanding god bless you son we are going to round up but let's we are going to pray this prayer systems of advantage abraham was an idol worshiper from a place called or of the chaldeans chaldeans were were idol worshipers they were necromancers when god called him out it still was not enough god met him and said i need to enter a covenant with you if i just call you and i say let's go to the promised land you will still die i have to provide a platform that becomes the basis of this new order are we together many of you do not know that the secret to the future you've heard me say it is in the past before you move forward in life you have to go backwards please hear what i'm saying all these names that we have given this phenomena in life there whether you call it failure at the edge of breakthrough whether you call it spirit husband whether you call it spirit wife whether you call it rise and fall all those are invented names that's to tell you many people are having the same experience that's why they could receive it and understand the teaching that i did the mystery of deliverance part one to four that message has delivered people until we stand before god to see how many people were delivered when truths are taught with imbalance it can destroy listen there are things that god does for the sake of the fathers there are things that god does for your own sake did you hear what i said there are some of you now you are in certain levels of blessings and favor and in the name of honesty you have nothing to do with it maybe your mother used to cook for pastors listen no before you were born your mother just said me you am not a woman of god but all i keep doing is if there is any pastor i will make sure i cook for them one day she cooked for a man who was not a pastor she cooked for a system and he swore a blessing and said may your children be great now listen that looks like a pronouncement it's more than a pronouncement and now you showed up and when satan is supposed to destroy you between you and the destruction the pronouncement comes in between you my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth the same way noah looked at africa and cursed africa and said a servant of servants shall you be as born again as we are that curse is still in place today now people are following from america and the rest and i don't mean to insult you but you will see the level of spiritual depravity that is in america the decadence right that when you put sex on phone male of or on a form male or female it's not only male or female that is there now male female and then some others yet in the midst of it 
you expect God to be angry and stand up and say, America, your glory has been withdrawn. <laughs> Every time he wants to do that, someone's prayer stands. Every time the coming of Jesus was about to be delayed, the prayer of Anna the prophetess stood in the realm of the spirit. Maranatha, come, come, come. I told you about my life that my mother prayed a prayer and had an agreement with God. She told the Lord, she said, Lord, my own father was a pastor. He died serving you. He said, please use either my brother, her younger brother now, or any of my sons to continue. Let it not be that this spiritual heritage is lost. She thought it was just a casual prayer. And then I showed up innocently. But something was a system of advantage. There are some of you today, you don't have any past you don't have any bad record it's not because you are a nice person you are one of the most loose and careless person but simply because there was an ordinance upon your life that prevented all sorts of evil from happening to your life because of the destiny attached to you let me tell you this you have to know the systems of advantage that god provided are we together the Yoruba people were given a grace upon their minds. It's a grace God gave that territory. A grace. Now, what I'm teaching you is truth from God's word. The, the Yoruba people as a nation were given many graces. Among them was the grace for the prophetic. The eyes that see. Not necessarily hearing, but the power of sight which was an extension of intellect is a grace please listen to me let me show you mysteries Igbo people were given the grace of courage and creativity it's a grace that was given that you can drop an Igbo territorially is a grace any poor Igbo man you see is a lazy man because they already have an advantage. Listen. The north. And that includes the middle belt. The grace is the grace of leadership and governance. It's a grace. This is what the northerners take advantage of. They study these things. They don't just come out for election. They know that we are standing on an advantage. These are ordinances my brothers and my sisters. In Mount Zion, the side of the north, the city of the great king. Are we together now? Leadership. So many times, when God wants you to be a spiritual leader, listen carefully. No matter where you are, in your voyage, you must touch the knot. No matter who you are. Listen carefully. This is where Bishop Oyedeko started from. This, no matter who, he will rout you because you must drink of that grace. How do I explain this thing? Are we together? When you say evil people like money, they don't like money. It is an advantage that has carved out a niche for them. Governance. There are few men of God who now lead the body of Christ who do not have an affiliation with something that brought them to the north. Notice that God, when God wants to announce you in Nigeria, you must touch Lagos. If your feet does not touch Abel Kuta and Lagos, you cannot be global from this country. Whether as a secular artist, I think we'll just end for today.
it is those who have the eyes that see that know Many of you don't know why God carried you and brought you to Zaria. It's not just because of koinonia. It is because these are the systems of God. He will bring you and you make contact with the possibility that he planted within that territory. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, the, the systems of advantage that you have provided for me, I walk into it. I walk into it there is a heritage that we have a territorial heritage an intellectual heritage a spiritual heritage Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. We're rounding up. I want you to get tonight's teaching. Please. I'd like you to give tonight's teaching to anybody you find. And tell him, please. Please. Listen. In fact, you can tell him it's a birthday gift from apostle to you. Take. Listen. This is not the kind of teaching... That you hear tonight and say wow wonderful <clears throat> this is the kind of teaching you will sleep and wake up with there are many things i have said that you did not hear but i guarantee you that if you understand what i taught this night there is no limit to your life you can take advantage of everything around you every territory has an advantage you can tap into the advantage that comes with it your church has an advantage your soil has an advantage your family has an advantage i know your father was a herbalist and a priest but that is the corrupted destiny of a prophet there is still an advantage that can be seen and can be activated. Hallelujah. This is how we grow in the kingdom. We don't just grow by will. We don't just grow by luck. Listen, let me tell you this. This night, I just chose to show you 
these are the things that work in the lives of extraordinary people it's not just that things are working anyhow no you see all this anointing the power of god breaking out anyhow it's not there are systems of advantage your life must learn it you must know it and you must know how to engage it every jew in israel knows he cannot fail born again or not meet any jew put any jew to be a board member of your company and you watch what starts happening no matter how foolish the decisions are the wealthiest people in america today are jews the greatest brands in the world today they are jews there is a history to the things we see there is a reason why boko haram thrives in the north they go outside the north they will fail north is the seat of governance there is an advantage in the territory they know this by divination the east is always a place associated with wisdom the magi wise men came from the east it's true the wickedness came from the seat of governance herod wanting to kill jesus so it should not surprise you that terrorism springs from the north the seat of governance and strangely enough the place that also looks like the seat of governance is also the place where revival rises hmm. that is the reason why you see the moves of god ministries like koinonia all these things are not they are not guessings they are pieces of a divine puzzle <laughs> are we together many of you are looking at me dumbfounded let's round up by one last prayer father in the name of your son jesus christ reveal to me every advantage that makes for my excelling in life from scripture from the ministry that i am under the grace from christ himself the chiefest of all advantages reveal to me let me know what i stand upon and the possibilities that are associated with that covenant please pray hallelujah hallelujah you know why the holy spirit decided to move this way to share this these are not things i share in a general meeting like this these are truths that you share when you are talking to leaders i don't know why god decided to allow this thing that's why i said please get it and listen to it you will think you understood what i said no your spirit man only appreciated what I said. You will need to settle down. Because you will hear something from that message. That will control your results. And open you up to the next season. This is how I live my life. I never stand anywhere in ignorance of the advantage. This world is too wicked. You don't guess your advantage on the battlefront. It's too risky. Tomorrow I'm on my way to Lagos again. I came back from Kogi State yesterday. 
there is an advantage I stand upon that gives me security over death. My life is a very risky life. If you live this kind of life and this kind of schedule, and all you say is, I know God will protect us, one day you will land in trouble. I am a giver as a person. It's both an office, a hobby, a desire, and a responsibility. And I know that the way I give is not recommended for an average person. I'm telling you this. You give that way, you will have problems with your wife, your husband, your children. That means there must be an advantage. This is more than financial intelligence. There must be a system provided that can allow for that dimension of God to continue unhindered. My work should do. If you do what I do for two weeks, you will have a health challenge. Sincerely, I'm telling you this. I've been out of this town since Saturday. Only returned yesterday. Had to rush, come for school of ministry. And all today, I've been busy doing a lot of things. I'm here now this night. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to be counseling for over the next maybe two, three hours. Heading back home. Barely have time to sleep. Tomorrow, I'm heading to Lagos. Straight into the morning session of a meeting. And yet, Tuesday is my birthday. You live like that, something will happen to you. If I've not collapsed, it's not just because I'm wise. There is something you must stand on. There must have been something God told you. Or God told someone you are under. Or God connected you to. There has to be something. There are ministries who don't understand this. They are anointed, but they pay every bill by themselves. They never experience help because they have not known how to tap into that advantage. There are some of you, you have never been helped by anybody. You have not lacked, but you don't know what it means to be assisted. Our lives are full of systems of advantage. There was something on Jesus that made Simon of Cyrene to be close by. There was something in Jesus that made Joseph of Arimathea to be willing to bury him in the virgin tomb. Look at me, please. I'm rounding up. I know I'm taking your time. We're rounding up now. Any earthly advantage in your life that seems to have gone, there is a spiritual replacement for it. Listen, let me comfort you. That means whatever your father should be. Please, I'm not getting you emotional. If your father here, if you've lost your father, or you've lost your mother, or you've lost any sibling, or you've lost a destiny helper, I'm bringing you a word of hope. That every physical thing that they should do, there is a remedy in the spirit. If it does not happen to you, it is because you do not know this dimension of God. That means you are saying, I'm an orphan apostle and the only child. No father, no mother. There is something you can tap into the realm of the spirit that can be almost equal, aside from the bodily connection of a father, a mother. Are we together now? There are some of you who lost your physical parents and God carried you and came and planted you in Koinonia here so that you can have the opportunity of receiving what is as real as, I, as fatherhood. That means it is your responsibility to go back to God and say, Lord, because of my faith, I left my loved ones. Now I am in Zaria all by myself. I don't have an earthly father. I don't have an earthly mother or I have a father, mother. Some of you here, please don't feel bad. I am rounding up, but I'm speaking by the spirit. Some of you here are single moms. You have your children, something happened. Maybe your husband died or ran away. Whatever the story is, it doesn't matter. And humanly speaking, you are supposed to be disadvantaged. But the Bible says, for we know. They don't know. 
but we know that the kingdom can construct an advantage for you there are systems of advantage apostle i graduated with a third class or i never even had the opportunity to go to school in the first place and the truth is at my age knowledge is not a waste but sincerely at my age the responsibilities around my life may not allow me the privilege of a young person going to go to school again there is a system of advantage that you can tap into that will lift you and keep you where your contemporaries are as though you did not have any disadvantage this is the excellency of working with god so this is a word of hope don't sit down feeling bad just because your husband died or your wife died or your mother died most times we cry for two reasons number one because of the earthly connection oh how he loved him that's what they said when jesus wept at the grave of lazarus but the second reason is because of the space and the vacuum that their absence creates and i'm speaking to you as a man of god by the spirit that there is an advantage in the kingdom that you can tap into you can outsource an advantage to correct the anomaly that the absence of these personalities have caused in your life you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne tonight God is asking you are you ready to stop struggling in life let me tell you struggling is a cause if you ever convince yourself that God is the author of your struggle I am telling you now struggling is a cause it's a cause from the pit of hell you will never be able to serve God if all you are doing in your life is looking for money because money is not missing you were never supposed to look for it hallelujah you will never be able to serve God if you allow this mammon the spirit that takes the heart of men away from God to begin to pursue other things trying to look for earthly relevance there are people who want to build a house but they want to build it physically by putting blocks you will die trying to build that house because there is a spiritual dimension to everything give us James chapter 2 verse 26 I hope we'll be able to find it I'm reserving it for next week by the way next week Friday here is going to be a powerful vigil hallelujah yes next week is going to be a vigil it's going to be a time of prayer and worship we're inviting guests from all over now watch this the Lord showed me this mystery and it changed my life I shared it in Abuja I was reserving it to start the teaching next week but your hunger has tempted me to go to that scripture and let's let's touch it a bit Paul watch this oh, sorry James the apostle James was teaching on faith and works corresponding action is that true and while he was teaching on faith and works he just feared off and brought a powerful principle in an attempt to explain faith and work he he, he compares it with something he says for as the body without what a spirit now all of you watch this guy the only reason that i can interact with him is because there is a spirit is that true if the spirit leaves this body what happens i will reject the body all of you will reject the body are you getting me and we will have to bury him because it is a body though complete it has no spirit are you getting me now i want you media please keep it there keep it there so that we'll... i want you to remove the word us and just read just the first line to the comma are you ready want to read one more time one more time for the body without the spirit is dead it is said for the body of man for any material thing that does not have a spiritual force backing it it is dead 
for any material business without a spirit equivalent is dead for any church without a spirit agency backing it is like a dead body it says for a body without a spirit so the nation of israel was like a body without a spirit and he said joshua you will lose you need the spirit component and circumcision authorized the spirit when the realm of the spirit came they said let's go we can take jericho and with one shout this was what david knew that as big as goliath was he was a body without a spirit the other people were looking from the three-dimensional realm ah goliath was shouting and david looked at him he said i see a body but there is no covenant no spirit what is the force in the spirit backing you and goliath said am i a dog even if you fight me honor me and david said you are joking you don't know who is talking i'm not alone I, I, you are an uncircumcised see the word again see the word again you are an uncircumcised i would have been afraid of you i would have considered your threat if you were circumcised where is the ties that connects you to the realm of the spirit and he said i'm circumcised i may be weak but there is a government that backs me when you get this key my brother you will run as if satan does not exist i promise you i promise you this you can jump around for deliverance you can hop from everywhere but the body without a spirit is dead so your boss in the office knows this and there is a spirit that backs his chair you just get up with your your certificate and sit on that chair and it becomes too hot because all in that office is not just a chair it's a throne there are spirits back in it that's why the bible said they that knew their god they that have connected with a spiritual advantage they shall be strong shall do experience rise from the realm of being natural and tap into the supernatural realm where the realm of the spirit assists you and your life will be nothing short of a wonder how many people listen i have given up on trying to do things by my strength because i know i'm wasting my time the body in the same way the next time somebody stands and threatens you that is a body without a spirit see no matter what talk people talk i only consider you if you are connected spiritually are you getting what I'm saying I will deal with you the body without the spirit is dead I will make sure you leave this job the body without the spirit is dead you only pay attention to a man who has risen beyond the three-dimensional realm because there is an assistance whether demonic or whatever are you getting me circumcision is that key there are many who continue ah we have a an extent we are going to be touching on the matters of the kingdom next week friday i'll be showing you certain secrets of the kingdom that it will make you almost like a drunk man you will get up and jump and shout tonight all we are doing in this miracle service is by an ancient mystery crying and asking heaven and say lord behold the sick people and already in this place there are more angels the arsenals in the realm of the spirit are more than what you know that's always what happens whenever you see me come to sit down i smile around the stage i would have died of hypertension if i'm responsible for your healing but we have made arrangement already we are covered oh yes absolutely we are covered heaven is jealous jealous to protect his own because god's designated portion listen when you steal your tight you have not only destroyed your destiny you have stolen from your children 
every time you don't tithe, just know that your firstborn is in trouble. If you don't do it again, you are affecting your children. Because he said, I will pour you a blessing, you will not have room. In other words, no matter how greedy you are, your lifetime cannot exhaust it. So when you steal, you have endangered the destiny of your children. God's portion. If anyone ever told you tithing is all about money, that person lied to you or was sincerely wrong. Tithing has nothing to do with money. It's the law of open heavens. Let me surprise you. If your tithe is 10,000 and you carry 1 million and give charity foundation and you don't tithe that 10,000, you are operating under a closed heaven. Don't convince yourself that because you gave 1 million, the heavens is open. It is called due process. I'll teach you next week. There is a protocol to spiritual things. Are you getting my point? Tithing is what opens your heavens. And then anything you do under that open heavens will prosper. If you like, carry one billion. Give charity organization. Give for the building of church. If you are not a tither, I guarantee you. The Bible says your heaven shall be brass and your earth iron. All of them are conductors of heat. Get set for heat in your life. When the heaven is open, if, not, if for nothing we know there is ventilation. Fresh air. The wind comes. But when your heaven is brass and your earth is iron. Many of us here, no matter what prayer happens in this, that's why we took the communion. The devourer is authorized to destroy anyone who is not spiritually circumcised. The devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. Even Jesus Christ acknowledged them. That's why he said he is the head of principalities. It destroys men's lives on legal basis. This earth is too wicked for you to allow chance. No. I pray for people all the time. People with cancers, HIV, tuberculosis, communicable diseases. Imagine if I refuse to be faithful. I would die like a chicken because most times I lay hands on people. And there are medical doctors here. They know that some of these things are physically not healthy. But I'm circumcised. My goodness. You invoke my name in a shrine. Both the invoker, the invokee, and the ordinance. It, they will burn to ashes. Ashes. No matter how mad a man is. He doesn't enter fire by mistake. He can cross the road and you say he's a madman. But when he sees fire, he fears off. When heaven backs you, let me tell you, your life becomes a wonder even to you. This ministry is a wonder to everyone. Not just because we are so smart. We are just stupid enough to involve the realm of the spirit. Because by the arm of flesh shall no man pray. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Mighty on your own. You are 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 mighty on your throne. 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 You are mighty in this place. 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 You 
with us are greater, greater, greater. Man toskala bandigalia. There shall no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Rababa Prayer point number one. Oh God, by the blood I cry for mercy where I've allowed the devourer I have stolen from my tithe your designated portion. I've allowed the devil deceive me that the tithe is a gimmick by preachers. Now I realize and I ask for your mercy. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside. Lift your voice. Your tithe is your spiritual circumcision. Why don't you pray? for mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Ask for fresh grace oh. and make a vow that you will never miss out on your tithe again. Make, make a vow. Not by fear. assurance and I pledge the name of the Lord upon this if you take what I've shared tonight for many of you this is your secret is your password to a mysterious level of lifting a level of lifting that will surprise you as much as surprise those who are your spectators God's portion the time his designated portion that makes creation to walk in your favor makes your enemies to walk in your favor 
mysterious but powerful consistent hallelujah just one more prayer and then we'll trust to see the mighty things that the Lord is going to do I want you to lift your voice in one minute we are going to pray in the next five minutes listen I want you to confront the gates of your destiny and I want you to pray and say you must open up this night lift your voice it's the seventh month the gates of my destiny must open up by the power of the Holy Ghost 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 one more prayer because I see the angels of the Lord already moving let me just add one more prayer listen I want you to pray listen there are giants on every mountain every one of us is holding a prayer request because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go but tonight i want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say i must go tonight lift your voice inside and outside cry I must walk away from that terminal disease must die today that cancer must die today that HIV must go today that barrenness must go today that stagnation must go today Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh 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 Hallelujah. Now, before I begin ministering, please, can I have that family if they are here? The family that came with the poison person. Are they here? Please, let's save time. If they are here, just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly. 
There's a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While that is happening, I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request. If you are yet to write, please one minute so that when we begin to flow, we just move and we don't stop. So you have one minute while you are praying in tongues. Just write your prayer request very quickly so that when it's time to pass it, you just pass it very fast. Man de kretu shebra de la barada da balada ba. Man ta la dosa so predishi la korea da balada ba. Make sure you don't keep silent. Write the issues that have threatened you and watch the God of heaven turn them into testimonies. What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me, what can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. tonight and we declare that this atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit. Lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to begin to minister to us and while I prayed for this in the course of the week, again and again, I kept seeing, please pay attention, can I have strings, 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 hallelujah, I kept seeing again and again, spirits, watch this, spirits, leeching onto people, this is what I kept seeing, like a man sitting on a man's shoulder, I saw this over many people, and I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord began to, re to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families. And the Lord said, when I come up, he said, the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers. Dislodge those powers. I saw them like a man, like a child who sit down on the shoulder of another, bringing a resistance to your destiny. And I'm about to pray for you right now. There are so many people under the sound of my voice. So many people under the sound of my voice. They must go. Heaven is here to assist us. Lift your hands everyone. Inside and outside. There will be such mighty deliverances outside. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I even see someone um, uh, suffering from severe migraine. But then that migraine you think is just sickness. We are about to make a shout, brothers and sisters. This shout is like the sling of David. It looks ordinary, but there is a circumcision upon it. 
It's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm. It's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men. It's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic. It's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now. There will be mighty deliverances. Mighty deliverances. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for us. And then at the count of three, we're going to shout that name, Jesus. My goodness. I sense the anointing of the Spirit. Help me. The power of God will fall upon many of you in a mighty way. And you will see this Spirit. Some of you are already feeling uncomfortable. It's the power of God. Especially many outside. There will be mighty deliverances. Lift your hands now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of your Son, I pray right now and I sound an alarm in the realm of the Spirit. I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that the fire of the Spirit, oh, restrain not your hand, oh, mighty one. We pray that you arise as a man of war. There are destinies at the mercy of your touch. I pray that by this shout, oh God, there be a visitation. That by this shout, oh God, everyone here under any spirit, help them please. Help them. Bring them out. Everyone here under any influence. As we shout, let fire catch them and visit their foundations. And I command every power that at this shout, you will let God's people go inside and outside. One, two, three, shout that name. I command witchcraft, powers of darkness, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, inside and outside, inside and outside, the fire of God is falling on people falling on people I cause witchcraft I cause witchcraft I cause witchcraft I cause witchcraft in the name of Jesus lift your hands Malatata I'm seeing altars on fire that's what I see in the spirit please bring them out altars on fire one more time we're going to shout physically many of you will feel the fire physically physically right now in the name of jesus one two three jesus! oh yes that's fire that's fire that's fire of the holy ghost Mighty deliverances by the power of the Holy Ghost. You must let them go. You must let them go. Right now. By fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. There are people here. As I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost will locate them. I'm seeing ladies. Ladies, a man comes to you in the night and sleeps with you right now by fire oh god locates them right now right now right now i cause that spirit i cause that spirit ladies ladies a miracle is happening to sisters i cause those spirits i cause those spirits Outside, the fire is falling on ladies, falling on ladies. 
I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord. Everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft. Lord, where is that person in this place? Inside and outside. Right now as I speak, the power of God comes upon that person. Right now, wherever that person is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, the power of God comes upon that person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. This is what the Lord is telling me. As we begin to pray, miracles will start happening. Lift your voice and break every chain holding you down. Go ahead. This is what God is telling me. please lift your hands lift your hands i hear my spirit families families god is stepping into families there are altars there are altars over families that are about to be broken as you are standing right now god is going to be visiting your family at that shout again inside and outside make sure you are participating inside and outside we are going to shout that name as you shout the name of jesus families so i see altars on fire are you ready now father any family under the yoke of bondage as they shout this name let there be a visitation one two three jesus families be free now be free now for a visitation again something serious is happening in this Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'm hearing marital spells. Marital spells. Please lift your hands. Listen. Hear me. Something mighty is about to happen here. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells.
tying down their marriages whether single or married right now lift your hands as i begin to speak the wind i see like a wind a whirlwind moving across this auditorium oh. it will catch up with some people right now where are they oh god visit them right now in the name of jesus one more time we will shout that name wherever they are one two three jesus Dorcas, Dorcas, a miracle is coming. Dorcas, an altar is on fire. And I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle. Dorcas, Dorcas, come and stand here. Hallelujah. Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, He must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't, this place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas, where is your mother, my dear? Huh? I'm not based in Zaria, sir. No, I'm not saying she's where is she? Mina, Niger she's in Mina. Yes, we have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands, Father. Change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free, Madam. Look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting Amen. but i'm going to pray for you yes, you believe that yes sir. you believe that yes, sir. because this is delay yes. i'm seeing delay in your yes, family sir. serious yes, delay yes, it's even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband yes, i'm seeing two of you arguing yes, but the lord is saying he is bringing rest to your yes, family this Amen, in the name of jesus Amen. christ father let there be rest rest for her in the name of jesus christ you are doctors where is your mother my dear you. she stays in Kaduna why the same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit 
and the Lord is ministering to me the Lord is saying why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her look at me like we shared tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing are you hearing what I'm saying and even you yourself otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship but hold my hands in the name of Jesus Lord bring rest to this lady bring rest to her in the name of Jesus Christ Can, where is the woman that had a miscarriage there is a woman that had a miscarriage and the Lord is asking me to minister to her we may not be able to minister to everybody but there is there is someone please make sure you don't sit back the Lord is ministering to me about that person so that we'll just we'll just pray for her Dogara Dogara I'm hearing a name Dogara Dogara who is Dogara you your name is Dogara yes sir where's your dad he's at home in Kaduna. He's, he's at home in Kaduna. we have to pray for him what I'm seeing will never if they are permitting anything please um, please maybe carry them out of we're about to pray please don't worry in the name of Jesus I lay my hands right now over and I cause that spirit that wants to bring accident in the name of Jesus it will not come to pass we cancel it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ amen madam I want to pray for you the way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. You are the one with miscarriage. Why did you sit back? Now come, there's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. It's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Okay. Huh? Yes, sir. It's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage yes, sir. because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes, huh? yes, and that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying and saying, pray for me. Okay, you understand? Yes, it takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will give birth to a baby boy. Oh. Hallelujah. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand and pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? We have to pray because I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics. Attacking your academics very seriously. So that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing. Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You are all Israel. And I'll pray with you. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman but in the realm of the spirit. All I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just do what I do. I curse that spirit. You must release her right now in the name that is above all names there is no hiding place the light of God is against you in the name of Jesus Christ there is no hiding place for you by the blood of Jesus Christ you must release this woman is a spirit of death let her go right now in the name of Jesus Christ father may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ May they experience your touch of Jesus Christ. May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your baby's name. In the name of Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, there is liberty for this boy. There's liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. There's liberty. Hallelujah. Now, all those who were brought out here under the anointing, I want to, I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here, I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice, I represent the most high. At the count of three, leave them and go. Right now, one, two, go, go, go. Out of them. Out. Out of them now. Out now. Never to return. At your Lord, live your life. Live your destiny. Restoration of virtue. Of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing on this place. Please, don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me, rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You, this lady looking at me. You, come. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You. Come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah, come. This is the person I'm talking about because I was praying and before I would even start I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter right you believe me you believe me you will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify in the name of Jesus Christ I pray the Lord says I should tell you he's rolling away your reproach madam the reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season that's what the Lord is saying I should tell you the reproach of many years is being rolled away. I'm seeing like a baller. That's what I'm seeing. A trash place where they pour dirt. And I'm seeing a new seed shooting out. And that's what is that's that's like a type of your destiny. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's rolling away the reproach from your life. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and let's release miracle job. If you don't believe in it, put down your hand. I command you by the blood of Jesus, you foul spirit, you have oppressed this body. In the name of Jesus, I break your covenant, I break your ordinance. There is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady. It's not just her. Can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady? I curse you. Now, I curse you. I curse you by the God of heaven. And I curse you by my office. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that power. Let her go now. Right now. Release her destiny. Release her family now. By the blood of the eternal covenant. She's free. Go. Release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. People of God, don't think we're playing games here. I know you may see some of the things happening. These are the powers that have tied down men's life. It's not solved by counseling. You are just moving in the physical Yet in the realm of the spirit you are bound. We are not embarrassed. We are never embarrassed to set people free. Because that's what Jesus said. There's got to be a way of setting people free. Hallelujah. Father, jobs now. In the name that is above all names. I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life. Lord, I declare everyone called jobless here by the favor of God I tell
terminate joblessness right now by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now anyone who has applied for any job I compel them to call you I compel them to call your loved ones I compel them to favor you anyone here called Agnes Agnes I'm hearing a name Agnes the Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes we we'll begin to pray for the sick shortly Agnes I'm hearing the name Agnes God is ministering to me he wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes do we have anyone there Agnes Your name is Agnes. Your name too. The family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We'll begin to pray for the sick. After this, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg, mysteriously, paining you, and it looks it's, it's like swollen. This is what I see in the vision that the Lord is showing me. Who is that person? Your leg is swollen. a body without the spirit look what is happening to this girl and then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife are you seeing that is is if it can look at one two three four five people holding one person imagine what it would do to someone's destiny i say this without a sense of cynicism many of the people that god is setting free attend churches every week look we need to restore the power of god in our churches and stop playing games with god because god's idea is not just for one platform hallelujah swollen legs no 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 don't you don't you don't have to madam i see you too your legs for how long What's the situation with her? Is her leg swollen? Okay, hold on. She can't walk. Baby, how are you? Hallelujah. Please help us with the mic. Who brought her? Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. What's your name? Annie. Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent lady. Lord, have mercy on this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick, and we let them come out. I'm just ministering to special cases. Leg, your leg. All of you, who had a dream? In a dream, it's like something was shot. It's like, I don't know if it was an arrow. I'm seeing something that looks like a dream. And something was shot on your legs. If the person is not here, I'm seeing someone who had that dream. It's like, I don't know if it was like a gun or something. Or, an, or a, 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 a sharp object. I know that it was, it's like it was shot to your leg. 
something beats me when I was sleeping. I just woke up and scream. So blood was coming out of my legs. I, I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to flow as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like, it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the spirit. In my dream. You were shot. Fired at you. Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You from prayed when you woke up. From the Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once, but truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God. And God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I cost it. Jesus' name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is your leg, yes. what happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in this thing. It's for me to stand or to walk. Almost two years. It's broken for Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? I, I can't stand like this. Some people are standing now. For me to stand still, it's a You can't stand straight? It's a problem for me, yes. Is it that it's shorter than another or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's a, it's cut it? good, as I'm standing. Huh? Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it entered his thigh and came and out came through out. the other thigh. This is thigh. the person I'm talking about. Yes, and it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his thigh up to the present. This guy Where is, is he? Here. Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos? Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him? Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, because sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate. Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hands. Father, visit this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I cast this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Madam, you believe Jesus will heal you? Yes, I believe. You believe with all your heart? Yes. Madam, what's your situation? Since I was sick for six months, but he used to swell up. But now I can't walk, but I'm walking with hearing sharp pain. Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay, how about you? My leg is swollen for five years. Five years? Where is which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand. I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? Two, two months. Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis. Yes. Who else? Who again? Leg problem. Leg problem. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs yes. swollen. Oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Sister, five years your leg has been swollen. Permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was wrong. Eh? Nothing was wrong. Nothing is wrong. Because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is like, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom, freedom for your legs. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft. Mama, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. Every wicked spirit leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on your chest. The Lord is bringing you deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. This is witchcraft. For five years, I'm seeing a spirit. Go! Go! In the name of Jesus. You can't remain in her. The swollen legs, I command the swelling to go down. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus' name. I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. are trusting God for healings and miracles I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place it is not a thing of pride to have so many look at literally maybe hundreds of people right outside there is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people it's not God's idea to have one superstar it's just that many people especially men of God are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities we are going to do this very very fast all of you who are sitting make sure you are connected and um, you are participating while we are ministering to the sick I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because I will be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you are standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and save The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. matter what is wrong with you just the laying on of hands the anointing of the spirit is like a drug the moment it enters your body it begins to work and it brings you healing you will notice that some people are standing for healing but as soon as hands are laid on them devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities
holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. condition of this brother the legs look at me leave him move your hand look at me have you tried walking before huh? lift your leg try lifting lift it lift the other one Just stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come, 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 just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come. Come. Come, come. come on, you celebrate are Jesus. On your throne. Completely the legs are open. If you are yet to pass yours, please just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing. Yeah. My heart will sing. No other name. No other name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Go 
those outside, can we have it quickly? No other name. Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, and as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead, Shibarato Soto Go ahead, stretch your hands as I pray on this. Now God is greater, our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Shaka Parata Katabaladaba. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. testimonies in the name of Jesus turn impossible situations into testimonies Lord we agree we agree we agree in the name of Jesus turn impossible situations to testimonies stretch your hands and keep receiving I receive by faith come on pray all kinds of miracles by the anointing of the Holy Ghost all kinds of miracles. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Even as these prayer points, Lord, are lifted up to you, Lord. As your people look up to you, Lord. They look up to you, Lord, from whence their help cometh from my Father. I ask you, Lord, that you send angels, Lord. You send answers, my Father. I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened, be opened. My Father, I pray for healings, Lord. Healings or terminal cases, Lord, let it be turned. Lord, where people said, there's no way, my Father, we pray that doors, Lord, you create streams in wilderness places. My Father, Lord, for people that cast away, my Father, Lord, you make them renowned by the power of your spirit. We ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord, prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies, we are bound in great ways, Lord. Unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, 
people that are insane you cause them to be sane in the name of Jesus we pray for contract that long delayed Lord we pray that Lord will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus and we pray for a shield of protection over your saints Lord in the name of Jesus we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit let the fire of God call, come on cold altars in the name of Jesus let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of Jesus we give you praise we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us Lord we give you praise blessed Father for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit we thank you in the name of Jesus we pray hallelujah hallelujah if you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony I'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah shout a loud hallelujah a loud hallelujah a loud hallelujah 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 for many of you it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ it's by the anointing it's not by English burdens are destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah this last segment you've heard me say it again this is the most powerful and most impactful segment if you're not a man of the spirit you may not understand what I'm saying please help them this is the most powerful of this segment right now before we go into this where I begin to prophesy there are two dimensions to prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy that dimension of prophecy gives you direction but the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension that's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word never joke with the power of prophecy that's the power that created the heavens and the earth he said I prophesied as I was commanded before we do that very quickly everyone inside and outside there are people here tonight who are saying man of God I want to commit my life to the Lord I've seen the miracles I've seen the signs and wonders but my way is not right with the Lord you know that right now as you're standing here if the trumpet sounds you're not making heaven you know it right now having a Christian name is not the same as having a relationship with Jesus there are some you've given your heart to the Lord at one time please help those under the anointing I tell you there will be a powerful impartation right now I sense a heavy anointing on me already that's why I'm doing this very quickly now if you are here please don't delay us you are saying I want to return home for whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of God and you are saying Lord I have heard your word and I'm not ashamed to make Jesus my Lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now I'll just count one to five please run like you are running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you sorry hallelujah hallelujah keep coming god bless you you have won it all for me hallelujah hallelujah you have won the victory Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won. Keep coming, keep coming. Please hurry up and catch up with us. Sasa di buchi. Sasa di buchi. One more time. Don't sit 
sit back there when you hear the voice of the Lord. I appreciate every one of you for coming out. This is the way to the cross. Listen, no matter what you achieve in life, if your eternal destiny is not secured, it says, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. But he said, this life is in his son. Until you have the son, you do not have that life. Lift your right hand. Forget about who is looking at you. And in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. It's not a special number. This is a decision. There's one of you here. You smoke all these kinds of things. It go and the rest. Huh? But as you pray this prayer, the power is broken over your life. Say after me, as loud as you can from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night I make Jesus Lord of my life I repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit I am born again I'm a child of God from today the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over me my past is gone and it's over forever I am a new creation in Christ in the name of Jesus the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life in Jesus name I pray now I stretch my hands over you and I declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of Jesus I declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life I release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of Jesus it is wiped away I set you free I break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah I want to congratulate all of you for making this decision this is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life hallelujah now very quickly so that you catch up with us in this prophetic session I want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands they will have your details and then we'll follow you up very closely praise the lord just follow them koinonia celebrate them as they go all of you this way this way just follow the gentleman now everybody rise please i want you to receive this prophetic word this is the seventh month and the bible says revive thy walk in the midst of the years hallelujah there is a mystery with the seventh month is the time where God perfects all things as I prophesy to you please I want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen hallelujah listen listen don't mind all that nonsense one way to conquer Satan is to ignore him all of that rubbish uh, is, is the devil works in the realm of the senses by the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things, you will waste your time. I know you are trying as ushers, just stand around. Satan does not have authority. I want you to know that there is an anointing. Manifestations are already signs that his power is broken. But Satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh. So he begins to act around your mind to distract you. When you ignore Satan, is one way of conquering him. It does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense are you getting my point so this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama praise the lord lift your hands i prophesied as i was commanded you are yahweh you are seated on the throne 
you are Yahweh seated on the throne you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne father in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now by the ministry of angels are they not ministering spirits send to minister today that be the heirs of salvation I pray for you every weakness in your life that weakness dies tonight in the name of Jesus every weakness in your life that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus hallelujah I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year an anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea cross every Red Sea cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every student here oh for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding I'm praying for you some of you listen as I pray now some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head it's an impartation of knowledge right now oh God I release an anointing to change the story of students at the count of three let it fall right now one two three take it take it take it take it now take it now that anointing receive it for exploits shaka ta 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 inside and outside take it for exploits 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 hallelujah everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy I command stagnation to end now 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 my goodness something is happening to your destiny every night season in your life every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day I speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor I don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of God is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now I see at least 100 people 100 people like fire 100 people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor 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 parekete embratata lakata i prophesy by an apostolic anointing favor favor favor
everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level i don't care where they are but i sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we're entering called august may that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level receive the keys of the next level the mysteries of the next level every spiritual blindness Shababa. things happen around you you cannot see blood of spiritual vision i pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as i'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the holy ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now be free from it right now be free from it right now hallelujah there are many of us here dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction but for many of us our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there the bible says they will dream dreams it says they will see visions Shakataba, lift your hands there will be an, a restoration anointing right now i just want you to shout i receive listen many things will happen to you many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where god will start showing you the blueprint for the next level right now in the name of jesus at the count of three as you shout i receive let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams hallelujah it says what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a jar of oil i want to prophesy upon your gift it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed there are many of you the gift you have can bring bread to your table but nobody is seeing it it's one thing to be gifted it's one thing to be skilled but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed thou anointed my head with oil and it makes my cup to overflow i prophesy to you whatever has covered your gift whatever has made your gift barren right now in the name of jesus i anoint your gift now i anoint your skill now i anoint your gift now Eriakata, creativity, creativity. I release it. I release that anointing, creativity, skill, expertise, competence, proficiency. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's god's desire that every man will also come to the lamb light i pray for you 
whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of Jesus I command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you hallelujah everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year you have tried by your strength i'm releasing grace upon your life right now go back to that same thing and watch how god will bless you through it i pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of jesus christ every business here is time to shine come on every business here i strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine lift your hands one last prayer listen i want to activate the gift of the spirit without the gift of the spirit upon your life your life will be barren and unfruitful it says for i long to see you that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established i pray for you in the name of the lord jesus christ that the lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as i speak father i come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gift one two three take it take it gift of healing word of knowledge gift of prophecy 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 i activate the prophetic i open your eyes spiritual gifts endowments of the spirit i declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow i prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring it to your life hallelujah lift your hands and give him praise father we give you all the praise I assure you you will know that this miracle service was unusual you will know many of you right from this night tomorrow will not reach you start having your testimonies right from this night right from this night favor alerts calls I mean connections mysterious happenings I speak to the spiritual borders of your destiny and in the name of Jesus I command that every gate that has been closed the Bible says your gate shall be continually open so you have a gate your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for you in the name that is above all names let everything in your life start working for you I command the earth to work for you 
I command the wind to walk for you. I command the stars to walk for you. Everything that is a disappointment in your life, I change it tonight to a testimony. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, keep standing, everybody. There are many people outside. Let me speak upon your life personally. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front quickly. We have one minute to do this. God bless you. This is your first time. You are most welcome. There is a prophecy for you. You must carry a signature. No, stand up. Keep standing. Everybody must know you came for Koinonia. Hallelujah. Listen, when you come here, we may not give you hampers, but we give you an identity. You will go back with it and everyone will know that you met the Christ. Make your way to the front. Koinonia, celebrate them. Glorious. Glorious. God brought them by his spirit. Is this the best you can do in appreciation to what the mighty... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. He says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.